So in this video today, we are going to take a look at the brand new Logic Pro X 10.5 update. I'm really excited to share this with you because they've implemented this brand new live looping feature. Because this channel's all about live looping, we have to take a look at this software update. So let's just jump straight into Logic 10.5. So this is going to be my first look at the brand new Logic 10.5 update. And in this video, we're primarily going to take a look at the live looping feature. But let me know in the comment section down below if you'd like to see me break down any of the other new updates on the software because they have added quite a lot of interesting things, which I wouldn't mind actually exploring in more depth myself. But we're presented with all of these presets, which is quite impressive. So Right now we have sort of your normal new project re recent and then some templates, but there are starter grids. Now these starter grids are live looping templates, so they're basically little pre-made songs for us to play around with. And that's what we'll explore in today's video so we can talk through some of the features. But one really interesting thing that I read in the update notes is down here in demo projects, and that is this Billie Eilish Ocean Eyes. Now obviously Billie Eilish is that huge female singer that does these really cool songs. I'm not really a fan myself, but I appreciate what she does track wise and she's a wonderful singer. But Logic have included the official track of hers broken down as the entire project for us to like dissect. So if you want a video on that as well, let me know in the comment section down below because that is actually pretty cool. In fact, let, let's boot it up right now and have a quick look. So in regards to a template, what we feel in here, I'm gonna go for Skyline Heat. That sounds pretty pretty groovy. So you just literally download them on the thing. It's a shame that it didn't come downloaded in the update. So I'll have to wait a couple of minutes before we can pick this video back up. Okay, so we've booted up this template provided by Logic and it looks quite a lot different to Ableton Live, but it does kind of work kind of similar. But let me break it down for you right now. So if you're used to how Ableton Live's clip view looks, this is essentially now Logic's version of clip view. But instead of calling them clips, they refer to them as cells. So these cells are essentially your clips, but they're squares instead of rectangles. So in each of these cells, you can have either audio or MIDI, just like in Ableton Live. However, the way it's laid out is a lot different. So in Ableton Live, to launch a scene, you uh, launch it from the sort of clip launch over here on the right hand side of the DAW. However, in Logic, the scene launch is at the bottom down here. Now, I don't know whether I prefer it being at the bottom or to the side. I guess it kind of makes more sense it being at the bottom of the timeline because you can kind of navigate along the timeline like this as opposed to navigating downwards like this. It might actually make for a better workflow, but we can actually launch the cells from the uh, clip launch thing over here, the scene launch. So we've got some kicks, snares, all sorts of different things loaded in. So let's sort of play around with it and see what we get. Right, so one thing I am really, really impressed with so far is the little waveform we have over here. Can you, so you can see on each clip, we have a different circular waveform. I'll see if I can zoom in on the logic at all. Yeah, there we go. So you can see here, you can see the audio waveform, so the different peaks within that audio waveform for this specific cell. Now this is a great visual representation of how complex that actual 
audio cell is. Now, when I was just playing around with that preset, I was sort of playing around with the uh, kick pattern and then I was like, oh, I need a more complicated kick pattern. So I saw this one here, you know, it had quite a lot of spikes going on. And then likewise, I was like, oh, I want a simpler sort of clap. So I went here and then I wanted a more complex clap. So I went over here because you can see on the waveform, there's a lot more happening inside of that cell. Now, I quite like that visual representation. Ableton does not have this. Obviously in Ableton, you have to double click and go inside of the cell to actually basically see the waveform inside of it. So that is really, really powerful. Now, one really cool thing about this brand new workspace that they've created is we can actually live loop inside of it. So right now, obviously I have a template which has got like preloaded samples into it, which you can obviously do. We can drag and drop sort of samples into this and start playing around if you wanted to figure out a song structure from doing that. But also we can actually live loop into it. So for example, if I had my keyboards plugged in and my acoustic guitar or whatever plugged in, I could head on over, record arm a track, and then bam, I could start recording into one of these cells, start putting down my ideas and then loop it back and then switch between some pre-recorded ideas, some new ideas that I've just done and start to sort of put together an actual track. This is actually really interesting because a lot of people, when we're live looping, we just live loop and we never actually end up finishing a song. But with this tool here, we can actually live loop to get our ideas down and then turn those into a song. And one way we can actually perform basically a song structure is as follows. So obviously we have this new sort of live looping workspace here, but if you look up here, we have the little original timeline view as well. So I've got both of them working next to each other right now. So I can actually close the live looping panel. And here we go, we're back to our bog standard logic that we've been used to for the last few years. And in here you can do your normal audio recording just like you would without this live looping screen. But the new feature that we can actually do is we can actually perform our performance inside of the sort of clip view area, whatever they call it, what's it? They call them cells. Inside of the cell view area and it will record this onto the timeline. Right, so now we're actually going to perform our live looping performance into the logic timeline. So this is going to allow us to sort of map out a structure for our song that we then maybe want to release onto Spotify, for example. It allows us to basically form the creative with the actual sort of practical studio essence of recording the track, making it a bit more fun. So what we're going to have to do is to turn this on is we are going to have to turn on this option here, which is enable performance recording. So now that that's turned red, we can click record over here and then I'll start launching my scenes. And you'll see we are recording onto the timeline. And likewise, when I switch over to this bit, this is a pretty groovy track to be fair, the logic is provided here. You could listen to this all day. Now what you will have just noticed there was a majority of my performance only got captured and that was because we accidentally left on loop cycle. Now we want loop cycle to be on when we're creating our loops so then we're not like going really long in our timeline and we can keep it all concise in one place. But when we're actually performing and recording onto the timeline, we need to make sure loop cycle is turned off. So then we can just continuously record across our project. So I will now demonstrate this in progress without it actually cancelling the recording. So we'll just kick off from this point here. And when we get beyond this loop cycle point, it's not going to disrupt the recording like earlier. And you can see it's now continuing to record because it hasn't been disrupted by the loop cycle mode. Now a pro tip while you're actually recording your performance onto the timeline, what you just see me do there was slightly wrong. You saw me just sort of click space bar, it stopped the recording to the timeline and it also stopped my performance. But the problem is with doing this as your workflow is if we zoom into the audio files that we just recorded, you'll see that we have actually 
cut off the tails of these audio recordings before they've actually finished their loop, which isn't much use if we actually want to do a professional track that we want to release. We don't want audio that's been slightly cut off. Now, yes, you could sort of like click on all of the different things and then drag them out like this. But the problem is with doing that is your workflow is one, it's a little bit impractical and it's very unnecessary. Now, instead, what we actually want to do is we want to click command enter at the end of when we finish our recording. So I'll now record a quick demo doing the command enter to actually finish the performance. And then I'll click spacebar to stop the recording process of the actual timeline. So check this out. And then I'll launch this scene here. So I'll now click command enter. And now I'll click spacebar to finish the timeline recording. So as you've seen, when I did command enter, it waited until the loops cycled to the end of their loop cycle. Then they finished at the exact same point. So now we can edit these when we're producing the track. So what you may have noticed when I've been performing with this live looping mode is what happens is when I switch scenes, when I launch into another scene, it waits until those current loops that are playing have finished their cycle and then it'll transition over to the next scene launch. Now we can actually alter how this operates. So in the top right corner, you can see we have this option called quantize start and by default, it's set to one bar. Now this works exactly the same as the Ableton Live Clip View. If you've seen my uh, Ableton Live Performance Basics course, check out in the link in the description if you haven't. But in that course, I break down this entire menu and this works exactly the same. So if I just launch a set of clips, you can see we have this little like um, circle and this circle tells you how complete that cycle of quantize and this basically is. So if I launch the next scene, when this is halfway around, it will wait until it completes this circle cycle before it hops over to the next scene. So check this out. I'll launch and now it'll change. So if we switch out the quantize start time and we increase that to, I don't know, two bars, you'll see this circle ticks around a lot slower which means it gives us more time to launch into the next scene if we're not too comfortable with it going around super quick, gives you a bit more time to think. So if I launch a clip now, it'll wait and it'll wait and it'll wait and now it'll launch. And likewise, we can make this even shorter. So if you just want it to be almost instantaneous, you can do it as a 16th note. You can see how fast that is repeating around and it literally changes as soon as I click on the scene launch. So I know this was a super quick video, but I just wanted to hop on the camera and share my first impressions of this Logic 10.5 update and discuss this live looping mode. We're definitely gonna be talking about this even more here on the channel. So if you haven't already, be sure to like and subscribe because I upload three videos just like this every single week. But as always, I've been Ben Rollins. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.